Chakritita and Chakranike. The splendor of the sunset in Dwaraka is something that one should not miss seeing. The sunset point is a place exclusively earmarked for viewing nature's beauty at its best. The sun seemingly dipping in the expansive ocean as a crimson red spectacle is indescribable in its grandeur. Sri V. Anand, who had accompanied and helped me in taking some rare photographs, told me that viewing the sunset in a photograph, not in the video, will create the illusion of its being the sunrise. Yes, it is true because the sun is of that hue when setting in the distant horizon of the sea. On the seashore of Dwaraka, there are rocks strewn all around and the waves hitting against them as also the tidal rise and fall of the sea are daily occurrences there. When the waves dash against the boulders with great ferocity, an amazing occurrence takes place there which is something unique and cannot be seen anywhere else. We got down and saw to our heart's content an unusual thing that has its origin there. While travelling from Jamnagar to Dwaraka by a vehicle, the distance view of the enchanting temple tower, the copious water of the Gomati river seen from a close range, the Yatrikas travelling in boats, the blaze of the mid-afternoon sun reflecting from the river, the mingling of the Gomati river with the sea and the multicolored flag fluttering atop the temple tower left an indelible impression in my mind. That night after Krishna Darshan, we all got down to the edge of the river behind the temple and had a sprinkling of the holy water on the head. As we had to get up early and go to other places, we could not have our bath in the Gomati on the preceding days. It had therefore been chalked out that we should have our bath in the river on the following day, enjoying the enthralling view of the temple from the opposite bank of the river. Besides, we were seized by a longing to collect a memorable thing from the place of its origin. With thoughts about all these crowding in my mind, I went to bed that night with great excitement. In the night, I could not sleep well because of the ecstasy of taking bath in a holy place the next day and more importantly, finding reliable evidence of an extraordinary occurrence taking place there that was occupying my mind then. In that state of excitement, the eagerness to see something regarding which I had known from many ancient writings and had entertained the craving to write about it after gathering authentic evidence made me realize for the umpteenth time that it is Sri Guru Raja who had blessed me such inspiration and enlightened me also of the inherent power of my writing. On the morrow, while going towards the mingling point of the Gomati river with the sea, we could see something unusual in the course of the river. The flow of water that was plentiful in the evening and at night had turned into a scanty stream and people were seen wading through the shallow stretch of the river. Though the river had its culmination in the sea, its distinctive flow could at that time be distinguished in the small streams flowing towards the end point. Goddess Gomati's temple is facing north when viewed from the backside of the Dwarkanatha temple from where steps go down to the edge of the river. The flow of the river is from east to west and a mild rustling of the waters could be heard near the bank. There are steps leading to the river from inside the temple too, treading about two furlongs on the river bed, bereft of water, a variety of precious stones and the rare thing that we, are, we were going in search of were seen displayed for sale by the vendors doing such business there. We had our bath in the shallow water after observing the religious formality of Sankalpa. Lighted lamps were then floated in the river. Darba grass, tulasi, coconut and rice are held in the devotees' hands at the time of taking the holy bath in the river, a sight that was common there. The river that had presented the sight of flowing in full in the evening and at night when seen on different days but being shallow at the time of our treading 
was a strange phenomenon. One may wonder whether it was because of the water having receded. No, it is not so. On the other hand, well past the afternoon there will be inundation again. Late in the afternoon the sea water gets into the river, while in the morning it goes back into the sea. Undoubtedly a wonderful occurrence. Likewise, another bizarre feature is the absence of brackishness in that water, which could be felt while bathing there. Incidentally, these uncommon things are attributable to the Leela of Samudra Narayana, for whom there is a temple at that spot. After the holy bath in the river, it is customary to have darshan of the Samudra Narayana, followed by a darshan of Goddess Gomati and then of Dwarkanath. Samudra Narayana's beauty cannot be seen anywhere else in the terrestrial world. So gorgeous it is. Its description will find place later. It is indubitably the Chakratita that is the cause for the transformation of sea water into river water as also for another queer happening taking place there. In parts 3 and 4 of Sri Raghavendra Mahimai, English Sri Raghavendra, the saint of Mantralaya. It has been brought to the knowledge of the devotees that there is a place called Chakratita on the bank of the Tungabhadra river coursing through Hampi at a spot opposite Sri Kodan Rama temple and the shrine of Sri Yantrodharaka Hanuman installed by Sri Vyasaraja. Near this holy Chakratita are located the Rishyamukha Parvata. Matanka Hill, Sri Vijay Vitala Temple, Sri Virupakshishwara Temple, Purandragatta and some other places of historical and mythological significance as detailed in these publications. In fact, Chakratita is not a tank or water source by itself. When there is a surge in the flow of water in the Tungabhadra river, it courses in front of the Kodanrama temple and while retreating from there, takes a turn to the left, swirling at that spot in a circular current. The Chakratita of Dwaraka is different from this and its significance is explained below. Like the Chakratita of Kishkinta and Dwaraka, there are some others too each one carrying a history of its own. When the cause for the chakra, chakratita, the swirling water in Dwaraka is under examination, it becomes necessary also to know about the strange object that is available at only this place, a th thing that is sacred for worship and puja. It is Sriman Narayana's Padodaka, the water flowing from his toe that is revered as the Ganga. The Gomati Ganga too is no less in its sanctity. What the Puranas say about these fine description below. After the great deluge, Brahma who was born out of the navel of Sriman Narayana on the lotus that emerged out of it started creation of the world under orders of Sri Hari. Submitting to him a condition for doing that. He prayed, Prabhu, after knowing fully about you, or at least trying earnestly to get such enlightenment, I shall take up what you have assigned to me. Sriman Narayana conveyed his approval for it with a smile. Brahma went to the west coast and indulged in penance there. At that time, a divine voice pronounced, A chakra, wheel, will emerge from the sea. You will have vision of Sri Hari at that time and get enlightenment about him. Brahma became ecstatic at it and uh, uh, Chakra then appeared from the ocean as indicated by the ethereal voice. Bhagwan will be appearing now. Ganga Devi, please come here to wash his feet, besought Brahma. Sri Vasishta Muni came there at that time followed by Ganga. The Lord made his appearance then as told by the celestial voice. Brahma washed the feet of Sri Hari with the Ganga water. The Abhisheka water then flowed into the sea and mingled with it. Ganga, who again wanted to do Abhisheka of the Lord's feet, was transformed into Gomati and the name for her as Gomati Ganga was graced by the Lord himself. This is the reason for Gomati Ganga being of the same sanctity as the Ganga.
Sri Hari had told Gomati, "This water from where the chakra has emerged will henceforth shine as chakra tita. My divine presence will always pervade in his in this chakra tita. Those taking bath in this tita will be effaced of their sins. Such holy bath will cause." also the fulfillment of their longings a bath at this place and performance here of one's religious duty towards the departed souls will confer one with as much merit benefit as the completion of 1000 ashwamedha yagas we had our holy bath in the chakra tirtha of the gomati ganga those visiting the dwaraka should not miss a bath in the gomati if that is not feasible at least a sprinkling of that holy water is a must and it should be followed by a darshan of the samudra narayana the place has derived its name as gomati dwaraka because of its location on the bank of the gomati river travel agencies conduct tours calling by the names panch dwaraka nav dwaraka bet dwaraka dakur dwaraka shrina dwaraka Gangroli Dwaraka and Gomati Dwaraka constitute the Pancha Dwaraka. <coughs> Whilst every Dwaraka has a speciality of its own, this Gomati Dwaraka is famed for the Chakra Tirtha and the Samudra Narayana. This Gomati, unlike other rivers, has its origin and confluence at the same place. Dwaraka is one among the seven places renowned as Moksha Puri. the place for salvation ayodhya mathura maya kashi kanchi and avantika are the other six the presiding deity of dwaraka is worshiped by many as lord trivikrama for the reason that the almighty had split the earth with a pestle and come out in the trivikrama roopa It is believed that a bath in the Gomati River will pave the way to reach the heaven. There is a Gomati River in Naimisharanya too, which is different from the one in Dwaraka. The Gomati River of that place mingles with the Ganga, while the Gomati of Dwaraka is the Ganga itself. The Gomati in Dwaraka is only three kilometer long. The sight of the sea water inundating the river in the afternoon. and retreating again to the sea the next morning is a feast for the eye which should not be missed dwarka is in gujarat state from mumbai and ahmedabad there is rail connection up to oka via jamnagar dwarka can be reached by taking the rail route or by travelling to jamnagar by air and thereafter resorting to journey by rail or surface transport shri vadi rajaswami in his Uh, Tirtha Prabandham has extolled the glory of Chakra Tirtha, saying that even an inanimate thing will transform itself into an adorable object by the power of this Chakra Tirtha. The hallowed thing referred to by him is the Chakra Gite. In other words, the stone with the impress of chakra or wheel. As already mentioned, it is by the grace of Sri Hari that the sea coast here abounds in rocks. and since the divine presence of the lord is ever pervading in the sea here the stones at this place have small chakra markings symbolic of their divinity in the chakra tirtha these stones are carried by the waves to considerable distance and left behind on the shore each of us could gather from there a handful of such stones while bathing in the gomati one can easily pick up such stones from the depths of the water amazingly the samudra narayana on the shore is presenting himself with such chakranike stones see closely the color photograph in the front pages guru raja by your grace i am penning this voluminous shri raghavendra magime serial traveling to various sacred places for that purpose thereby earning the punya or merit arising there from which you are in a like manner bestowing also on the others journeying with me as also on the large numbers of readers of these publications what more benediction we can crave for o guru raja the chakranike stone found in the dwaraka chakratirtha 
is white in color this cannot be separated from another st sacred stone black in color in other words they are to be kept in unison if the aforementioned white stone has shri hari's presence in it the black stone is shri hari himself yes it is the salagrama stone that is being referred here the salagrama is alluded to as the lord himself his chakra being present in that chakrangite has the lord's divine presence in it with his chakra for worship of the lord and the welfare of all we apply gopi chandana which also has the chakra mark in it and may be spotted when broken applying the gopi chandana on our person and doing abhisheka and puja of the salagrama together with the chakra nike will efface all malefic influences including the sin of slaying although we get chakra nike in abundance from the chakra tirtha we cannot locate such area with precision for it would apparently look like the river mingling with the sea on the contrary the salagrama that is denotative of shri hari himself can be found in the place of its origin even today that is at damodar kund damodar kund is not a place easily accessible unlike the gopi talab and the chakra tirtha readers can have darshan of damodar kund through this work just as they had of the place of genesis of the gopi chandana and of the chakranike with the laborious efforts whatever darshan i could have of the damodar kund i am sharing those experiences with you all in the next few pages thereby enabling you also to visualize the holy place